in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Let's hold our hands and just pray in the spirit just for a minute or two. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shalaba Rukato Sikya Dada. Aruto Sukadaka Dabala. Pray in the spirit. We are crying for the help of God. We are crying for the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. Just find a neighbor and pray for that neighbor. Lord, open the eyes of my neighbor. Grant him grace. Grant her grace. Grant them illumination. Are you praying for someone? Find someone and speak a word desperately from your heart. I may not know what he or she is going through, but Lord, let the entrance of your word grant light standing up to the simple in the name of Jesus pray Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we honor you tonight and we ask that you honor the sacrifices of your people we have gathered tonight. So many connecting from around the world to hear you speak. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you speak. Because if you do not speak, we have nothing to hear. There are many voices, but we want to hear your voice. I pray, O oh God, that your word will build us, perfect us, and bring glory out of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good to be back home. Please greet someone by your left and right, and then please be seated. Hallelujah. We've been on a series, Spiritual Stability. Um, we had to suspend it for over two weeks because of the miracle service and then the graduation last week, but we'll just take it off from here. Thank you, Jesus. It's always my joy to bring us the word of God um, not just because it's a call not just because it's an assignment you can serve God and do the work of him, the ministry like an obligation um, but when God gives you a revelation of what this word does you know every time I sit down and I hear the people testify 
um, many times I just nod my head and I wonder what would have happened to these people, these families, these destinies, if they didn't have access to the word of God. When God wants to help you, he truly sends his word. He sends his word. He sends his word. He doesn't bring his word. He sends his word like a messenger. And if that word is received and understood, in it will be the secret of your lifting. And I pray that God will continue bringing beauty and glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. Sing in this place. In this place, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, you take the honor, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, you take the honor, you take the honor, you just want to say thank you, thank you, you get the glory, you get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, you take the honor, you take the honor, you just want to say so in my life, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in my life, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Hallelujah. This is what this is all about. He said, hearing is our Father glorified. John 15 verse 8. When we bear much fruit. Did you know that all these things we go through is for one reason. Listen to my message for your glory. It's a series. You need to listen to it. If you don't have it, get it. Get it and listen to it. For your glory is with the media after the service you can go online you can download very powerful message because we need to understand what all these sacrifices are for i just thought to myself today i said anyone that gets into ministry just for money or for fame or for titles in today's world is in for a root shock a very root shock if you get into ministry just because you are looking for a cheap alternative for fame, loyalty, prestige, and all of these things. You will be in for a root shock. Ministry is tremendous sacrifice. Most of the life of a man of God is not seen by the people he blesses. Most of the life of a serious, visionary man of God is not seen by many people. It takes a lot of sacrifice to be a blessing. But what a joy. Because you are motivated by the fact that much more than your needs met. Much more than a vision accomplished. Much more than your assignment fulfilled. Is the fact that you are bringing glory to the, the heart of the Father. Are we together now? Please, I want you to insist that your life will bring glory to God. When Jesus came and saw a fig tree, it was taken from the earth. Are we together? And yet it was not producing fruit for anyone to partake of it. 
Jesus didn't advise the tree. He didn't say, let's leave it after two, three years. He cursed it immediately. That means there is something about a life of barrenness that robs God from the glory that is due him. So you must not only come here all the time, but cry that my Christian life must be fruitful in every ramification. I think we should turn that into a prayer. Father, let my Christian life bring you glory. Let my life produce results. Are you praying? Please don't look around, pray. Whatever it will take, oh God, for my life to produce results, let it produce results. Whatever it will take. The sacrifices. With my life like a gift to you. Sir King Al Jarkina, one more time. Yabone na Yabone na Kao, Sujata ne na Kao, Sir King Salama, Sir King Al First Corinthians 15 spiritual stability part 2 1st Corinthians 15 and verse 58 Apostle Paul is teaching here and he's challenging us on the need to be stable he says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast I want you to look up please unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The key word there is to be steadfast, unmovable. Are we together now? The entire, please look up. Let me remind us that the motivation behind this series is captured in the name of the series itself. To give our Christian experience a level of solid stability. Are we together? Because the times that we live in, please listen carefully. If you do not know and understand what you know and believe, then sooner or later your faith will be challenged. There are people challenging everything on earth today. Everything. People are challenging whether Jesus is really the son of Mary, the son of God, challenging whether it was a virgin birth challenging whether he resurrected many people have proposed that from the resurrection jesus went to europe and stayed there married there got old now you would think it's funny until you see the kind of people saying it if a poor and weak and naive person is talking you don't listen to him but someone who has intelligence and influence when he talks, you must understand that he's supporting whatever proposition with some kind of facts. So the Bible says, be steadfast. There are preachers today, after preaching a line of thought and a perspective about God, after 10, 20 years, they stand on their altars and don't know what they stand for again. Are we together? Yes. We have to be careful. Because there are all kinds of teachings coming into the body of Christ. Number two, there are all kinds of teachings that should not go out 
that the devil is trying to take out of the body of Christ. And some of them in the name of old school, new school, you know, whatever it is. That means that there is a need, like Apostle Paul is doing here to the church in Corinth, to bring believers to a point of focus and order. It's not enough to be born again. It matters to God that you are stable. Are we together? I, I watched a Jimmy's wonderful son while I was sitting there. I, I remembered when the gentleman was trying to walk. It was such a struggle. He would walk one, two, and fall down. Sometimes I want to help him, and the father will not even mind. He says like that, they will be strong. And now that gentleman is walking and not even thinking about what he's doing. And I said, wow, this is my message. Stability. It's all right to rise and fall, but not forever. You can't continue to stand up if, if a five-year-old child, listen carefully, tries to stand, tries to walk and falls, you know there's something wrong. How many of you have seen a full-grown adult have a problem with stability? Doctors are here and they will tell you something is wrong. And this is what we want to correct. Are we together now? Because you see, in spiritual things, physical age is not necessarily a determining factor. You are going to hear people young and old, some of them your parents, come up with perspectives that may be sociologically acceptable. But let me tell you the truth, is largely antichrist. Do you know why many people, we are going to continue, I'm just, I'm just giving a little preamble for tonight's teaching. The reason why there is a lot of instability in the Christian work of many people is because there was never conviction from the first place. I can believe a lie for donkey years or because I am part of a system that believes that lie and there are benefits I get from that system, I usually will not question it. Are we together now? And we camp around some of these things and the devil is destroying people. Look at the shock at which people are denouncing their faith. And it's okay for members, but where men and women of God, a man who has represented a spiritual voice to territories for many years, all of a sudden gets up and now says, for instance, gay is right. Are you getting that now? Or sits down and then comes up with some scripture and says, this is this. There is need for stability. Otherwise, our children are in trouble. We are going to teach them nonsense and rubbish. Ask these little children some of the things they are learning in school. You will be surprised to hear what they are teaching them. Are we together? And just because, you know I love the body of Christ, but just because a man goes to church does not mean he is growing spiritually. In today's world, going to church is not enough. Because church is many things today. Are we together now? People were doing well before they started going to certain circles. It was in those circles their lives got into a level of confusion and nonsense. It is church, for instance, that have made people to beat and drive their wives. It is church, for instance, that have made people to even sacrifice their children. We must be steadfast. There are things that require correction. There are things that require applauds. There are things that require preservation. Are we together now? Be steadfast, immovable. So we said that it matters that we are grounded and productive in our Christian lives. It is lack of spiritual stability that has produced a lot of imbalance and spiritual vacillations. Today, we are loyal to this school of thought. Tomorrow, we are loyal to this school of thought. Next week, we are loyal to this school of thought. The Bible says, even if another angel gets up and preaches another gospel, he says, let him be a cause. That means angels can preach. And if they can preach, they will preach. The same way people have received different things. And then, one of the reasons why this series, I believe, is very important 
is to be able to create boundaries for this appetite for spiritual knowledge and rema there has never been a time in the christian faith where there is hunger we want depth which is all right i mean we just want to dig deep we want to search every greek word every aramaic word every hebrew word we want to read every book find out together all of these things there must be a system that guides people otherwise we are going to get into trouble i have heard preachers preach over the years and by the privilege of the apostolic office i have consulted with many materials even extra biblical materials not for the purpose of error but to be able to understand the spiritual sphere and i've had a lot of messages i can almost quote verbatim i know the book this man this man has read this book this man is preaching from this article this woman is talking from here it is one of the reasons why god grants you the privilege to be vast in your knowledge so you can know where error can come from are we together right now the average young man is more concerned about the scarceness of the revelation that comes from him rather than the truthfulness of it so if i communicate something there there was a gentleman one time i listened to the gentleman and he was so authoritative he claimed he was one of the incarnates of the old prophets so i ordered his materials i ordered lots of his materials is the young arrogant guy like this and i ordered the entire materials not for cynicism i wanted to go through it and when i went through everything this guy wrote and what he proposed as the correction of the bible i said wow this gentleman is in trouble he needs deliverance and he needs it fast are we together i have read books that i opened the page and i can tell you they copied it from one zodiac book one stargazing book there are many things done in the body of christ that the origin of that operation is scientology some of it is spiritism and mysticism just because god can be a mystery does not mean that anything mystical and spooky is god is god speaking to us now because we must be careful as we as we taught the, and, and you know sometimes we men of god in the name of prophetic instructions and in the name of anything we just do all kinds of demonic things and especially because many christian circles around africa and nigeria have come from a foundation of tradition you know that the christianity in africa is largely it has a little touch of tradition which there are wonderful sides to it in our songs we dance we sing but there are certain practices that are truly rooted in witchcraft number two there are people in the bible who were genuine servants of god but at certain points in their lives they operated by spirits that were not of the christ just because they were people of god but the operation within that context was not of god there are all kinds of things in this bible that's why you must be guided you will read this bible and you will see principles of witchcraft in it that's why you can enter a herbalist shrine and see a bible there he can open it and read this chapter this verse this but it doesn't mean number three it also does don't write i'm still on my preamble just because a, a spiritual operation produce result listen listen just because a spiritual operation produce result does not mean it is of god are we learning because you see the realm of the spirit i have taught you this any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm can supply a level of advantage into this realm 
there are people being caught up in the spirit every day and every time and they are not getting caught up necessarily by the power of the holy ghost are we together almost every religion i know they have zealous men and women who can tap into powers greater than that which is the human for instance your grandfather and your grandmother how did they cook the yam that they cooked that you didn't see fire under that, that's a spiritual law how did they disappear somewhere and appear somewhere there used to be these kings growing up i used to hear about them and they would tell you they have nine lives some 11 lives come on africa talk to me don't we're not in europe here nine lives they even say cats and animals all these superstitious things and when we get born again we don't allow the spirit of god to renew us well so we carry the backlog of those experiences add anointing and scripture on it put everything and serve it as a menu and while people consume everything they are motivated by the results that come from it spiritual stability we need to be grounded do you know why because error can intimidate someone can stand in error and intimidate you and make you to leave everything that is the epicenter of your conviction most of us now i don't mean to insult but a number of us here i presume are not well traveled both within the country and outside this is why we have not seen the framework of the kind of challenge that can come over our christian experience one of the blessings of exposure is that it opens you to other territories alongside the the social cultural context of the people there are lands that you go to that is two percent christians and you will be surprised to hear what these people know about god what they know about jesus christ till today there is still argument on the body of christ as to the correct formula for getting born again you see that there are many people who say they are born again and they are not born again it's true you don't wish getting born again you don't hope getting born again you don't assume you are born again you don't inherit getting born again there is a principle and today we have people we have ordained people deacons we have ordained people pastors we have ordained people we have given people churches to handle yet those people themselves ask them what is your salvation experience and the person what, what kind of stupid question is that do i look like a sinner you see the, the person is clearly telling you i don't even know what this thing is yet that is the head of evangelism just because people go with a, a a placard and sing songs and use um the, the loudspeaker doesn't mean they know what they are doing and it's the reason why many believers are frustrated because many years of lying to yourself you will get to a point where you say i'm tired look at our children now they hate church they hate god do you know why because they've been asking questions since they were babies we refuse to answer them unfortunately they don't have the kind of loyalty we have growing up for many of us here you didn't ask for why you just obeyed if they give you money bring it to mommy you don't say mommy why is my right they will beat the living daylight out of you so if they, you just obeyed but you ask a little child now baby you should give me say why uncle why my teacher said every time they should ask why welcome to a generation that needs answers and let me tell you we are not going to continue moving religiously by faith we need a very spiritual and intelligent conviction to support our christian work if you're with me say amen. amen hallelujah men of god send me text messages every time and sometimes they are like apostle how do you do it i've preached every message i know i've done my best i've read every book I've preached every series. I've preached every whatever. I've done everything. I'm tired. I, I, 
I literally have to open my Bible few minutes to service to check what have I not said before is it Matthew 6 33 is it revelations what what would I not say that's why people just shop messages and bring and preach something is wrong with our conviction spiritual stability the last time in part one we agreed that the first key that we need to create stability in our work with God is an experiential revelation of God remember so point one is an experiential revelation of God that we need an experience with God a personal experience I remember the old folks used to say have you had a personal experience with God right now we're young people and we don't even know what a personal experience is but the old folks who say do you know God personally have you had a personal experience with God an experiential revelation of God and we broke it into a and b a is through his word remember first Samuel 3 21 that the Lord appeared again to Samuel by his word in Shiloh and then number through number two through the family of true believers we agree that the family of believers can help you to know God the corporate gathering the spirit of community among believers if you are a Christian and you don't have a spiritual family you will not be stable because you need a family of like-minded people to support your belief and to support your conviction it matters that when people get born again we don't just isolate and throw them around it's a different thing if they are in a region where there is no platform where believers can gather are we together now believers need to support and strengthen themselves especially for those who are younger in the faith they must come in the midst of those who God has helped to gain some stability so that they can watch they can watch their life they can watch the way they are growing it's not just a principle that works for your Christian life it works for everything when you watch people who have gone ahead of you you receive directly or indirectly the system that they have worked with so that it can help your own work too so number one through his word number through the family of believers number three through your pain and challenges that our pain and challenges are gifts now i know that um this is not an aspect that many of us like it's a very touchy aspect don't talk about pain don't talk about challenges but i tell you honestly i don't believe that god afflicts people i don't believe that god causes pain and this but one thing i know is that god can take advantage of every situation in a believer's life to teach him something about god are we together now yes our pain and challenges cause us to need god and to prioritize him most times when people are comfortable and there is convenience there is usually a side effect whether convenience through prosperity success or whatever the side effect is that usually it will dampen our passion and our zeal for god it will seem to give us a reason to not press into god are we together now it will seem to give us a reason to say i mean i don't whether i pray today or not there's food in my fridge are we together whether i pray today or not my child's school fees is hundred thousand and i have hundred million in my account i mean what what is the prayer for quite honestly whether i pray or not i have a house i have cars i have businesses i have relationships and connections everywhere so why pray why seek god why spend time so god takes advantage of the periods of pain and challenges because they calm us down are we together they keep us in a position where we can think we can reason and god steps in and says my son my daughter now that i've gotten your attention through this let me show you something about me our pains and our challenges help us explore dimensions of God 
we may have ignored or trivialized. There are things about God that we probably may have ignored because of the comfort and the luxury around our lives. But when we go through pain and challenges, they help us to explore those dimensions. I told us again that one of the greatest dimensions of God that pain and challenges birth is compassion. Compassion. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest, listen carefully, who has not been touched with the feelings. We have very hard people whose heart is like stone. And remember, the Lord said he will give us a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh is not a, a weak, chicken-like, mediocre heart. No. Are we together? The heart of flesh is a heart that can have compassion. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you see someone crying, you can say, oh dear, I put myself in this brother's shoes. Oh, I've not eaten a puzzle. So what? Am I the president of this country? Please. No. That's a heart of stone. A heart of what? Stone. There's a reason why it is called stone. Because stone doesn't have feelings. You can pour anything, you can throw it there. And there are many believers. We may look born again. But the reason why we are quick to destroy and tear down others. The reason why we are quick to be judgmental. And to be presumptuous on people. Is that we have not learned compassion through pain. There, there, there is a way that you will go through certain things in life. When you look at people. You will just pray for them. Are we together? Yes. I have seen people go through pain. I have seen people go through challenges. Sometimes I sit down and wonder. I say, Lord, if I were the one going through this, would I be able to survive? I've seen people go through it. I remember, I think we were in Abel Kuta early this year. And some two wonderful women, mothers, quite elderly, they came and their combined age, that, not their age, the combined period they had been waiting for a child, for two of them, I think it would be like 52 years combined. Now, it's easy to stand and shout and say, Lord, I will trust you and love you forever. After 20 years, 21 years, 22 years, it's like a man who has been hearing the sound of a gun every day. If they call you and say they are a thief, you say they should kill me now. What, what, am, am I alive before? They should come and kill me. I'm already dead. Challenges create compassion. And it's one of the ways you can know you are, whether you are a Christian. You know, you will be blessed tonight. There are many wrong parameters that many of us use. The Bible uses love and compassion as a major parameter to measure spiritual growth. Just because tongues are charismatic, miracles, like the gentleman who came to share testimonies. You shake someone and the power that leaves your hand just carries that person up and down. They look and say, boy, is this guy anointed? And you will fool yourself into believing that that automatically produces spiritual maturity. Love. There remained these three. Faith that moves mountains. Hope that maketh not ashamed. And love. He said, but the greatest of the three is love. The day Jesus will come will be surprised. Because those we may think that will stand just because of our charismatism you will find out that one old mama who cannot speak English, huh? one woman who nobody ever invited, will be the most spiritual based on God's rating. Lord, what did this woman do? I didn't see her on TV. I didn't see her in Koinonia. In fact, I saw Apostle Joshua Selman praying and laying hands for her, and I saw her falling down. And God will say, compared to Apostle Joshua Selman, it's like the sky and the earth, the spiritual levels. If you want to know God and you want to be sincere, listen to this thing I'm teaching you. Are we together? An experiential revelation of God. 
you must go back crying and say, Lord, give me an experience of you. I want more of you. You've forgotten the song. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. It says, in the year King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. This is a man I've been representing. Oh, I've been standing for God. I love God. I do. But in chapter 6, when Isaiah saw the Lord, high and lifted up, he said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. God would have said, ah, that's, that's too much. That's too much humility. He said, carry the coal and touch his mouth. Because it's true. And then he says, whom shall we send? He said, here am I. You've heard that message. This guy had been doing ministry for many years. But now he's saying, send me. So who sent him? It's amazing how you can be doing your thing, claiming you know God. And God is just sitting down there. Claiming that you know God. I know everything about God. And God is saying, well, you may know me, but I don't know you. It's like saying you know Bill Gates. Does he know you? more of you more of you more of you jesus more sing more of you more of you more of you more of you jesus more of you jesus more number two we'll start today's teaching now the second key that creates stability in your work with god is establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions about god establishing foundational values write it down that reflect your convictions about god and you may want to add and about life establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions about God and about life. Apostle, I want to be stable in my Christian experience. The second key is establishing foundational values. Satan attacks great visions by attacking foundational values. Write it down. Please write it quickly values you will never be stable in your christian life if you do not create values around your life that reflect your beliefs values around your life that reflect your convictions about god are we together spiritual values intellectual values financial values there must be values this is where i believe that many believers innocently may be missing it we love god but somehow we feel that having values that govern our lives that means that these values coordinate your life to have a level of predictability what are your foundational values about god I was in the Anglican for a number of years. And those of you who are in the Anglican here, there's something called Apostles' Creed. Remember? I believe in God. Now, listen. You will think that's just a chant. It's a powerful reminder. It's a compendium of the entire belief system of your faith. I know that sometimes we can make rituals out of it. But now with understanding, you are stating what you believe. You must create your own creed 
for God and for your life. What do you believe? What do you not believe? You can't tell me you believe everything and you can't say you don't believe anything. Even an atheist believes something. Koinonia is quiet this night. Thank you, Jesus. I assume that this is a revelation that the Spirit of God is working on our lives and helping us. Foundational values. What do you believe about God? It's better to be in error at least to know I don't believe this. There are people who believe that Jesus is a prophet and that's all. They don't believe he's the savior. It will be easy to save those people because what they believe is clear. Are we together now? There are many believers whose foundational values are vague. Establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions. People should be able to look at you and in an instant know what you believe. It's not by making noise. You see, let me tell you this. And I say it with all honor. In the body of Christ, we talk too much. We talk too much. Yet, in the final analysis, most of what we say are not our foundational values. We talk about kindness. We talk about all of these things and yet we don't believe it. Do you have foundational values? Any person who does not have foundational values in his life will never be great. Will never, I repeat, be great. Ask any great man in life and destiny. Part of the secrets of their greatness is that they have been able to create values, foundational values. What are the principles you have put in your life to support your spiritual growth? Oh, I will grow as the spirit wills. You will never grow. What have you put? Tell me clearly. What have you put to support your spiritual health? What have you put to support your prayer life? You see, and, and, and I don't mean to be sarcastic. Please, if, if I offend you, I'm sorry. But some of this carelessness have come from an exaggerated communication of the grace message. So every time people have to put physical pillars that help them and support them to stand strong. They feel guilty because they feel it should be automatic. No, sir. Ask any successful person. Nobody becomes great automatically. Is that true? The people who announced their jump here, 270 days, they didn't just close their eyes and dreamt and sat down and then stood up. They, they labored. Let's respect the sacrifice that creates stability. Don't just say, Apostle, my prayer life is going down. What are your spiritual values? That's my question. You will never be stable if you don't have values. At what point can you punish yourself? At what point can you supervise and discipline yourself? You are the first mentor of your destiny. It is not always about people policing you. Is there something you can do in your life and say, this is not consistent with my values. I must be disciplined for this. I usually pray every day by so time to so time. Now, I slept off. I must pay that price in that prayer by having a one full day retreat. That's discipline. You don't allow weak people fool you and make your spiritual life go down. You need tenacity and energy and discipline. Are we together? Values. I will never come here for koinonia and be stranded of what to preach because there is a value around my life that makes sure that by Friday my message is prepared. I look at it. It's not automatic. Tomorrow I'm in Zamfara. Tuesday I'm in Lagos. Coming back for the retreat. All of these programs, these are major conferences. How do you prepare them? And then you have to sleep. And then you have to do other things. Is the reason why many believers are not balanced in their life. They don't have values. You get up anytime. You sleep anytime. Are we together? You can go out of your house without plan. And not discipline yourself for being that careless. 
you just plan to go and do something in someone's house you end up spending the whole day and you don't do a review to punish yourself for that carelessness it's not it's look do you like what i'm sharing it looks like you don't like what i'm saying you, you better like it because this is what makes people great say values shout it again some of us need to create values that govern your going out and coming in not everywhere is goable no sir my friend has birthday somewhere is is my friend will you die if you don't eat the cake can they cut your own and keep for you we have this 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 carnality that make us believe that until you go and establish your presence everywhere values a married man gets up leaves his house in the morning returns back by 12 o'clock and no explanation to the wife and children where did you go to what is your business am i not your husband no sir you are in discipline no sir you are in discipline if i don't have anything doing outside you will not find me outside no way there's you see it's lazy and unserious people that have all the time to spare do you know sometimes in all honesty i tell you this sometimes i sit down by morning and before i finish preparing all my it's already evening and i'm wondering my god it's already 10 i can be in a, in a position from morning till maybe i'll just get up to ease myself or do something values I'm going to have the devotion. What time? There's no time. So there's no system of creating discipline. You get up by 5 o'clock, but you don't have a value in your life for when to seek God. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying now? Even the reading of the Bible, there is no system. You just say, okay, today. Okay. First Kings 13. No. This, I don't want anything that will scare me. Where is Psalms? <laughs> psalms for his message you look for a simple four verse psalms and just read and wonder why you are not growing why should you be surprised that you are not growing how many of you have seen some of these evangelists that preach in the park if they sometimes six in the morning they are there they will do it for more than 20 years early in the morning as soon as you are traveling you will see them there they are preaching do you have values for your life? Many of us are not bad, but we are receiving the result of bad people because our values have not edited our lives enough to allow good things come to us. Are we together? One of our dear ladies was, was, was sharing and, and sent me a text today about some, some people that stay in, in their compound or so, smoking all kinds of things and harassing them. I said, look, if nothing is done here, find a place immediately. We'll support you to find a place and get out of that place. Are you that desperate for your growth and your destiny? Have values. Have values towards money. Have values that govern your character. Compromise. You can tell yourself, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. Anytime I see a great man, I will never beg him for money. It's a value. I will find out from him. If he blesses me, that's all right. So if you see a multi-millionaire come, your values. Are you seeing that now? There is that itch, but your values. But there are others, as soon as they, ah, your boys are here, you see, you don't have values. And anybody that does not have a, a spirit that does not have control is like a city without walls. Many believers are not stable because we lack values. You cannot define what are the values that I live by. It's better to be sincerely wrong, but at least that you set values. I have a value. I have a spiritual value over the man I can marry. Or the man I can go out with. Or the woman I can go out with. When you see a lady that loves God with all her heart. You know, sometimes it doesn't cease to surprise me. And then with all the spirituality. Here comes this, this uh, uh, 
brother that that is is not you know that this guy is far from the cross he's even far from uh, what's the name of that place where jesus died golgotha far from it and here comes the lady smiling and asking whether it's the will of god the situation there is lack of values if you have values you already know i can't be this selfish children are going to come from this union and i'm going to submit to this man i don't want a man that will make me bring forth children whose destinies will be destroyed if you are honest and you are serious you will think about your children not just yourself it's not all about my i love you i love you my comfort you are thinking children will come from this what if i start praying with my children and the man comes and says, no prayer in this house what happens to you we now begin to blame god say values what of friends what is your standard for having friends in your life there are married people who have bad friends ungodly friends that keep causing trouble for their homes are we together values spiritual values what is the parameter that qualifies a man to have access to your mind or do you just listen to everybody just because they are talking what must be present in a preacher for you to listen what of finance some of us don't have values at all we lie anyhow and it doesn't matter me, I'm both old and new school. I've told you, depending on what is old and depending on what is new, there are things we call old school that is just, is, is very new, is latest school. Just because it's ancient does not mean it's outdated. Let's be careful when we define some of these parameters that continue to destroy our lives. Some of us love God, but when it comes to, let me bring money out. When it comes to money, look up please christians look up when it comes to money you are praying in tongues someone just says uh go and buy me polish how much is polish let's say 200 naira just because you saw the money god goes places because money has entered your hand just because the person does not ask you for change you will come and drop the polish and go away with the change you don't have values how about this big man what will he do with 50 naira is it your money is it your money sir you know once in a while the bible said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me so once in a while god just draws this thing out to just straighten our lives some of you think these things are silly are we together now what is your value to regulate your social media whatever what is watchable and what is not watchable don't say i'm an adult you have a mind <laughs> right now we expose our little children to things they should not watch and they ask us questions we cannot answer are we together values I'm giving you an assignment tonight that when you go back please spell out very clearly what do I stand for and what do I not stand for with respect to God and with respect to my destiny some of you have done well having values for your spiritual life but you have not done well for your destiny you don't have values that govern your destiny in the name of Jesus I will never be lazy whatever it will take I will do well value in one minute i'd like you to cry to god and say lord have mercy upon me and give me the grace to have values and boundaries in my life lift your voice and pray are you praying it's a hard message but it will bless you lift your voice lord i have tolerated laziness in my life lord i've tolerated carelessness in my life lord i've tolerated all kinds of of things that should not be in my life i've tolerated pride lord i i declare i want to go far in life please pray you're not praying pray
Oh, apostle, but I'm all right. I'm holy. I don't sleep around. I don't drink. I don't smoke. What of the values of character? The values of empathy? Please pray. It's the reason why some of us have never risen. You have never seen a need to discipline yourself because of carelessness. You must be able to have a way to say, sit down. This is not right. This is good. I have to discipline myself. I spoke rudely. No, one of my values is honor. I was out, I lost my temper and I spoke rudely. I demand if without supervision. Lord, I receive grace to supervise myself. I receive grace. I receive grace. Are you praying? I receive grace. Shalabakata brada kete baladaba. Shakate kata barakato so pariel kata. Spiritual values, intellectual values, that I will never go to bed till I've added something to my mind. It's a covenant that you make with yourself. It's a core value. No matter how sleepy you are, you wake up and you say, I must improve myself every day by self-supervision. You are a pastor. By Thursday or Friday, every message to preach must be ready, no matter what it is. Guiding principles. If I finish eating, I must wash the plate there and then. Every day, I must sweep my house, whether it is clean or not. Guiding principles. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I would do is play worship and read my Bible before browsing, before watching a movie. Values. There must be boundaries in your life. I'm a music minister. If I wake up every morning, I must rehearse. No day will go without me rehearsing because I'm going far. I want the nation to bless me. As a man of God, I must pray at least in tongues one hour every day, two hours, whether I like it or not. It has nothing to do with whether I'm strong or not strong. I may be sleeping. I will carry my mattress outside. That one hour, I must cover it. I will put an alarm clock and pray. I must study five chapters every day one chapter every day come what may i discipline myself please pray lord help me to set values in my life i'm tired of living my life anyhow praying anyhow visiting friends anyhow watching anything anyhow there has to be boundaries in my life that coordinate me for the purpose of greatness. He says, every man that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. You will never be great being careless. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are people here, the last time they read a book was last year. The last time they read a book was last year. You buy all kinds of books and pile them and continue to lie to yourself and others that you have so many books. And then there's someone that reads one book per week. Look, let me tell you, please. God is not unjust. If you are not willing to do this thing right, it will not work. Are we together? There are many preachers that see what God is doing in, in some of our lives and get angry. They don't know the sacrifice. These are my boys that work for me. Ask them. I, I don't think I have ever gone to bed. Not, not in the last. I don't know the last time. I cannot remember the last time I went to bed earlier than 12 midnight. Not for any reason. Even if I have a flight to catch in the morning. Please, let's not mock ourselves. They say, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. If you are not willing to pay the price, don't insult those getting the result. Because God is just. He's rich unto all. Are we together? 
an average message anybody that is serious an average message takes hours to prepare you don't want to know how many materials are consulted for just one simple message as you call it what of the prayer on it oh lord bless your people oh lord increase your people a friend was trying to call me this morning i told him i'm praying i will call you when i finish i finished around afternoon and i called him he said since that time and i told him i said what do you think the anointing is a charm what do you think the anointing is a charm i considered getting a chef years ago but i said getting a chef would be a waste of time how many times do i eat in a day I would just be giving free money to some and cooking food and wasting it. But how many times do you eat in a day? Four times in the morning, between morning and 12. <laughs> Another five times. Someone has to really tell you the price of greatness so that you will see and know. And if it's too scary for you to get there, then respect the person who gets there because we have this honor for success in this nation we see people pay such huge price and we trivialize it as though they were just lucky you are just lucky to be anointed you are just lucky to have a crowd you are just lucky it's just that god just gave you intelligence there is a price jesus was anointed with the holy ghost but he still went about he went about it was the doing good that was the anointing the going about was his strength he went about that's why many people have a lot of spare time no values they sit down morning till night gossiping more talking about politics then they move to men of god then they move to farmers. Then they move to what is happening in the north. Then they move to Boko Haram. It's five, ah, no food today. And that's how they spend their day. And before you know it, there are children around you asking you questions. Mommy, why are we like this? He says, it's the will of God. No, sir, it's not the will of God. If you are a man of God here and your life is not on fire, there is an explanation. Don't you ever say it is the will of God. Find out the price it takes to be great. There is a price. You want to be stable in your spiritual life? The price is establishing foundational values. There are things I must do every day, no matter what happens. It doesn't matter whether we are fasting. It doesn't matter whether there is koinonia. It doesn't matter whether I'm traveling the whole day. If for any reason I miss it, I'll be lying to tell you I get it 100 over 100. But if I don't get it, I pay that price. I will pay that price. If I have a time for prayer and for any reason, I'm a night person because I like, I like a lot of, um, it's been like that, the way God trained me. Most of my prayer is in the night. You can live with me for one year and except God chooses to, you may never, maybe it's just the sound you may hear, but you may never really catch me. You will think I don't pray because I love the night. Everything that can distract has gone. <laughs> I off the light and pray with all my heart. I don't pray and then I check phone and quickly say a message has come. That's not prayer. You are playing. You put your heart in this thing. Do you know the spirits that attack you when you are about to be great? Do you know the level of attack per day that comes upon a man of God? You don't want to know. It's more than just good preaching, my brothers and my sisters. Please, I want you to make up your mind. I don't want to dwell here. We'll, we'll move to other things. But make up your mind that you're going to have values. There are friends, you've heard me say it. Send them a text and say, my brother, I found out that every morning, 6 o'clock, you come and wake me and you sit down. I don't mean to offend you, but please, don't be offended if I don't open the door for you again. There are... There are people in the name of friends. I'm not, relationships are important. But there are friends that are not godly at all. Six o'clock, they have knocked your door. Some are even Christians. Bros, how are you there now? You collected that movie, right? And you want to pray. But you are too, many of you don't like feeling bad. Some of us who are already used to persecution, we already, we have gotten the whole thing. 
But some of you want a good name, even at the expense of your spiritual life. I don't want anybody to say anything wrong about me. And someone comes to your house, you are praying, you stop the prayer, you close the Bible, and then you slot the, the movie. And the person is just, he's there till one o'clock, invites his friend the next day. And then the third friend they invite is a smoker who does not respect you or your values you come into a house you are seeing the picture of a dove you are seeing the picture of jesus you are seeing the picture of a poster it shall be well and you still sit down with cigarette shamelessly but you are afraid if i drive this one now may god give you courage to send them out quickly Don't let anybody call you at the fruitful part of your day just call you where are you i'm in the office ah what are you doing i just thought about you oh god bless you thank you i'll call you later no 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 i want to talk now there's g's g's day that's why we never become great we don't know that this thing keeps adding god is a just god you don't sit down and cross your legs around and then you want god to keep sending you nations no i returned back yesterday by evening as soon as I returned, removed my clothes, I didn't even rest. I got straight to work. I don't know what time I slept this morning. I woke up later. I, I slept maybe around, it, it shouldn't be earlier than 4.30. And by 10, I was awake till now. My eyes touching the bed to sleep again, maybe at least 3 o'clock in the morning. Yet, I have a ministration in Zamfara. Do you love your destiny that much? Or are you just singing songs about it? Behind everything that works is someone making it work. Did you hear what I said? Behind everything that works is someone making it work. It doesn't mean I don't joke. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm an antisocial person. But there are people who at the level you are in life, you don't have the luxury for play. I can decide to take a whole day off to relax. I think I, 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 I've, I've worked enough to merit it. But somebody that is just starting in life, say apostle is resting, you too, you are resting. We only rest on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, God rested. You are resting on day one. It's an error. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh, cometh. When no man will walk again. Please sit down. God bless you. Thank you, promise. So the second key to creating a st stability in your life is to establish foundational values. An attack on your values is an attack on your destiny. Satan does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by attacking your values. Number three, let's hurry up for the sake of time. Mm. What is the third key to creating stability in your work with God? Receiving the ministry of the body. The third key, you want stability in your Christian life. You must receive the ministry of the body. We'll have a long reading. First Corinthians chapter 12. We are reading from verse 12 till I ask us to stop. 12 down about 26. Actually, the whole text is the, is the entire from 12 to the end. But we'll read down maybe 25, 26. Now, please look up. We are creating stability in our lives. We are going to read. For as the body is one and hath many members. Paul is teaching now. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Paul is teaching about the body now. Next verse. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Another word, Anglicans, Pentecostals, Presbyterian, whatever it is. Whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink of what? One spirit. Say one spirit. It's one of the foundational doctrines the doctrine of baptisms one lord one faith one baptism for the body 
is not one member but many now paul is teaching something here he's teaching that this body we call is not just one member but many okay if the foot shall say because i am not the hand i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body he's asking a question now and if the ear shall say because i am not the eye i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the whole body were an eye where then is the hearing powerful paul is an intelligent man imagine if the whole world was koinonia you would think it would be excellent if the whole world were koinonia where will be the miles moon rose that will receive the teaching and the revelation of the kingdom from let me tell you this one of the manifestation of error and pride how you know you have deviated in a way that demands deliverance and repentance is indoctrinating yourself to believe that your ministry or your person is a sufficient representation of all that is needed to present the fullness of christ any man any woman man of god business woman whatever if you ever conceive that thought it's a sign that your life is under attack if the whole body were koinonia where then will be the benny Hins, the kenneth copelands the redeemed church and all these places my goal is never to make every ministry koinonia my goal is to contribute my quota as far as the privilege of god's grace has been given to me to supply my own contribution to the overall body i have said this again and again and again i thank god for the privilege of balance i am not a balanced man of god just because i'm independently sound i'm a balanced man of god because i have a heart that is open to the body there are dimensions that are not shown me and I never would have seen no matter how close I am with God. But my genuine opening to the body has given me room to be able to look and say, wow, so there is something like this. It's not been captured in my experience. Let me study it. If the whole were hearing, where then is the smelling? All these parts have distinct functions. 18 but now god had set the members every one of them in the body as it has pleased him believers are you seeing this now your life will never be stable if you are imbalanced doctrinally and we men of god sadly and and very 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 i say it with all due respect because of our individual complexes we carry our complexes that are as a result of our esteem of ourselves and and add our complexes into the context of ministry and make it look like it is god that is imagine that i sit down now i say don't listen to any man of god if any koinonia person listens to any man of god aside from me you are not being loyal that's devilish it's a terrible doctrine i have a responsibility to guide you i have a responsibility to teach you i have a responsibility to mentor you is that true but never to sit down and lie to myself and lie to you that in myself as Joshua Selman, I contain all the dimensions that are in God. I travel around and I see dimensions in God that sometimes I stand and I say, wow, this is amazing. And I sit down to learn, my God, I never knew this. Is the reason why I love the body of Christ don't carry that bias that just because it is not your church or it is not your pastor every other person who is not you is a devil and many men of god we are victims of this and the danger is that we are subconsciously raising people after that paradigm we're talking about the church in nigeria i think it was with Ejimi some some weeks remember and we're discussing and and i was sharing with him how this button of ministry came down right from the samuel ajayi crowders and i was just showing him the spiritual history of the church in nigeria to this present time celebrate the body 
we are perfect as a body as individuals we may have our own limitations we have our own pride and prejudices and immaturity here and flesh here and imperfections here i know i understand our levels of alignment to the spirit are not the same our levels of hunger and passion for god is not the same so the results will not be the same however however it matters i was living i was living asaba yesterday and there was a dear man of god he was part of the people that came i was already late hurrying to go and catch the flight and then he requested that i just come step my feet in his church and pray i don't know him from anywhere and i said oh dear this man let me do my best and at least stand and pray for him i know what god has put in my own life i know what will happen to his church when i pray for him so it's not just because i am anointed i know that his church will never be the same you see that one of the reasons why i love dr miles Munro, you hear me talk about him so much not just because he's the one who mentored me in the area of the kingdom but when i started out in life and ministry i wrote letters to several men of god now i'm not offended i'm not saying they are bad because you write a letter to me i may not even get it it's, it's not the best but i mean i do my best to make myself accessible but sometimes it's just not possible so i totally understand it's not from a standpoint of sarcasm i wrote letters to several people several ministers just telling them my encounters and just trying to leverage on them to make sense of my life for me and among there were different versions of replies i believe but miles munro wrote me handwritten handwritten and encouraged me and shared certain things signed it with his own signature and sent it from bahamas to zaria and i got it i said lord i want to be like this man whatever will make a busy man like this the largest church in bahamas a pastor of pastors an advisor of presidents to have the time to send to a young guy trying to gain his balance spiritually that's the reason why all these prayer groups and fellowships and the young people some of you here every time they come and say apostle this is what we are doing it doesn't matter whether they are in error or not i love them and i embrace them because when i was at that level there was no one close enough everybody who could listen were too far and then they continue to say young boys are rebellious but who is the person that can listen and can pat their back there is no group and no association and no group of gentlemen and women that i will not love them and hug them if there is something that needs correction i'll say adjust this 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 and just love them and bless them i made up my mind that as god lifts me i will never be too far that i cannot bless and help the people coming you must receive of the body and if they were all one member where were the body we are reading to verse 26 let's hurry up but now are they many members yet but one body everybody say one body say it one body many members and the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet i have no need imagine if god started doing all those encounters producing dramatic encounters i was seeing the saints of old having visions with them yet i was poor i was broke and everything i did was poor and was broke imagine if those anointed in the body to supply that dimension i rejected them that rejection would have reflected in ministry today it would be an anointed ministry with baskets all around forcing both your neck and your hand to cough out every money in your pocket today we are able to walk in this level of integrity by the grace of god because we have received the supply of those dimensions i never started my journey with god knowing anything about finance it was the spirit life encounters visions dreams the word prayer faith i mean everything just throw yourself spiritually 
anything that had to do with excellence administration leadership i didn't know anything about it but bless god for the body bless god for the body nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary there are ministries in the body that are not on tv there are ministries in the body that are hidden and silent and the bible says those ministries are also important and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable everybody say less honorable say it again less honorable look up please this bottle of water was kept by someone imagine that your assignment on earth is to always keep water for joshua selman you will look and think that just because this is not it's not you are not shining so you see the guy who is holding the mic and preaching and talking i'm shouting right now and somebody is falling under the anointing outside and say, wow this guy we can think based on human parameters and our ways of measuring things that the person who is doing this ministry is of lesser honor no hear what the bible says upon this we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more what abundant comeliness that means your heart that you cannot see can stop your leg that you can see from walking your brain that you cannot see have you seen a madman whose body is complete yet he's mad because something that should not be touched in his head was touched say amen just because one one molar has a problem an adult it will force your eyes to shed tears it will force your legs to run around because you are worried just because one tiny teeth has a problem that means there are ministries we are ignoring in the body what this woman who has just a small prayer house she just prays for people and writes the names of men of god let's leave this sofa head woman let's go to koinonia where things are happening and you leave the woman whereas you don't know joshua selman is standing today because that woman is kneeling down you see that oh lord help him let the revelation be fresh upon him lord help him there are people who pray for me as a ministry i'm not talking they they believe they are called by god thank god for the prayer department but there are people i know some of them they believe that their assignment in life is to intercede for me and I don't joke with those people. When people send me a text and say, Apostle, I just prayed for you. No matter how busy, I, I do my best to at least, if I cannot sow into their lives, I cannot pray for them. Or I pray back for them or just try to do something to make them um, feel honored for what they have done. 24. For our comely parts, sensitive parts, have no need but god had tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which which lacked 25 that there should be no chism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another prayer ministry care for the prosperity ministry prophetic ministry care for the apostolic ministry are we together leadership ministry care for the man of god who all he knows is how to heal the sick and preach he doesn't know how to put an excellent organogram make your ministry available provided he's ready to receive it the bible says but as many as received him meaning he can be rejected there are churches you go to you see the power of god but there's a lot of misbehavior i can be preaching now sam come i can be preaching and a member will just run and come and touch my head and go back to sit down what kind of indiscipline is that <laughs> are we together all in the name of excitement no the house of god is not a, a cinema uh, uh, hall neither is it a place for movies and circles it's a place where lives are changed when you see that it doesn't stop the power of god from flowing but you will know that a dimension of the ministry of the body has not been received or some i'm preaching and someone squeezes one thousand naira and throws it to me is that how to sow is that how you sow corn? 
You so called with respect and dignity. Ask any farmer. You throw maize like that, you don't come after four months to get a harvest. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive the ministry of the body of Christ. Say in the name of Jesus, I love the body of Christ and I receive the diverse ministries of the body. Let me advise every man of God here, you are a pastor, you are a spiritual leader of any sort. Never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry. I repeat, never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry because you are sowing a seed that will grow, must grow. I don't want anybody talking against me and talking against anybody serving here and I will not sow that seed. I will challenge wrong doctrines but I will never find myself stand and tear down. See, imagine for instance, um, um, just come Sam. Imagine, come. Imagine that these guys are laboring and doing their work and just because of one or two mistakes in their lives i just come and push everybody aside to show that i am joshua selman i'm destroying them what does this guy go and tell his wife our ministry is going down why joshua selman tore down your ministry this guy i tear people down and i stand you don't have to cut the head of people to show you at all if you are tall, you are tall. Please, I want you to learn this. That in the name of Jesus, you will zip your mouth from talking against men of God, talking against their wives, talking against churches. Don't do that. Are we together now? Don't go around, ah, this man of God's wife, this man of God, this one. Now, we are not perfect people in ourselves. It's true. And different ministries have their different dimensions of god uh, and there are the truth is that there are things to correct in almost every ministry there is something to adjust there is something to correct so the observations may be justifiable but it's still not enough reason to tear people i have preached everywhere from anglican to catholic to cherubim and seraphim to um Presbyterian, Equa, Cochin, Pentecostal, I mean just name it, I'm for the body. I love you. I never show any, where are you? Are you for who? Are you for us or no? I would not do that devilish thing. In this ministry, there are people who are a, a product of different churches and different places. Now, let me tell you this. You don't have to agree with a man or a doctrine to love. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It, just because I accept the body does not mean I accept every doctrine. There are doctrines that are obviously wrong. I have my convictions. There are doctrines that you will never hear from this pulpit. Because as far as the responsibility of your spiritual growth as given to me under God is concerned, I will do my best to present to you the most accurate and balanced portrait of spiritual truth. However, I will not just go and meet someone who maybe has a problem with the baptism of the Holy Spirit or has a problem with deliverance or has a problem with healing and then fight the person. Don't make that happen. This is one of the mistakes that I see happening especially among younger ministers because we are all young. Younger ministers. Sometimes I look at them and I see them training themselves to resent. Oh, you are Anglican. No, I won't. I'm serious with God. You are what? You are from... Mm, don't do that. I love people regardless of... If I don't agree with you on many grounds, when we meet, we discuss the areas we agree. We agree about the growth of Nigeria. We agree about the fact that this country must go places. We agree about the fact that the poor and the needy need help. These are areas that we agree on. Why bring a sensitive and touchy area? It's one wisdom key you may receive. When you are in the midst of people who don't exactly agree with you, be careful. You may want to bring subjects that 
are generally agreeable. Are we together? Is God speaking to us? Thank you guys. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to receive the ministry of the body. I'm a product of many anointings. And by the grace of God, these anointings have contributed to making my life what it is today. When I travel to different places and people try to honor me as against other preachers in that land, I, co I come against that, that honor immediately. Don't do that. Don't honor me at the expense of other men of God. I've shared with you my story how that once upon a time I traveled to a particular place for administration and um, the media people or so came to do an interview for me. And you know, they were making it look like the men of God in the city were just doing nonsense. Now that apostle has come, I said, no, 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 don't do that. I have only come as a contributor to strengthen the hands of of the men and the women there imagine how healing it will be for you as a pastor when you hear another pastor says i've come to strengthen your hands years ago when we wanted to organize a crusade uh in 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 in, in massacre i remember when the pastors were doing you know i was presenting it before the pfn there many of the pastors were feeling look they said some of them said if you are coming to open a church just say it because many people have done what you have done. They will come and say crusade. We will labor and give our speakers. As soon as they finish, they just appoint your keyboard. This is now your usher. The other person is now a prayer band member. You just share people's members. Say, just tell us. And I laughed. I said, no, I'm for the body. I don't hate the body. And that's what we did there. Throughout that crusade, it was honor for the body all through. Praise the Lord. You must love the body of Christ. I love Equa, I love Cooking, I love Baptist, I love Living Faith, I love MFM, and name them. I love everyone. For as long as there is one person in that circle that names the name of the Lord, regardless of the individual imbalances, if God were to walk just on our perfection, then all of us will not have a ministry. Every house, in a great house, regardless of the vessels, the house is still great. Are we together? God bless you. Number four. The fourth key to creating stability in your work with God is to engage the practice of personal retreats. Hmm. The practice. Engage the practice of personal retreats. personal retreats take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me you are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place. Take your place. Mm. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. We're reading to 31. The grand secret of spiritual stamina, the practice of retreats. A retreat is a time, I think, um, what's the message now? It should have been the last message for last year. Let me tell you this. It's a shame and I'm very disappointed in this ministry. 
if you are a worker and you are a faithful member in this ministry and we call some sermons and you look as if you are not aware it's a sign that you are not serious with god quite honestly are we together there are messages that must be in your archive because life will make you demand them retreats retreats a retreat is a time away from your normal activity a time set apart to seek the lord to spend time with the lord retreats are times of personal appraisals retreats are times of correction retreats are times of empowerment Has thou not known, has thou not heard, the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not. So the Bible is talking about fainting here. It says, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Next verse. He giveth what? Please talk to me, Koinonia. He giveth Power. that means when people faint what do they lack power the spiritual capacity to stand he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might he increased strength that means there is a reason why people go down power is missing strength is missing it says that if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small there is a way life can push you that will force you to turn aside you need a retreat even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall next verse but they that wait upon the lord to wait upon the lord is not just to fast you can fast and sleep you are not waiting upon the lord hello to wait upon the Lord demands seriousness and intention. The best way to wait upon the Lord is to fast. But even if you eat, eat light enough to allow your spirit. There is, there is a relationship between the busyness of your mind and food. Once you have choked yourself with food, even, even medical people tell us, by the time you eat... I mean, if you take a lot of food, you find out your body begins to hibernate. You want to sleep. So sometimes you will need that space. There are many believers. It's amazing. As far as I'm concerned, and now I, I, I stand to be corrected, but a Christian who does not fast is not a serious Christian. I'm not talking of a special corporate fast. There is no week in my life I don't fast. Impossible. Impossible as impossible as saying Satan died for my sins. Are we together? Could it be that your belly is the reason why your destiny is closed? Yes, sir. Could it be that you have not held on to the four horns of the altar in a retreat? There are men who have not encountered true power because they are not ready for it. When you get angry with life, that door will open. No. It's just that many people are too casual about life. Lord, why is my destiny locked left, right, and center? You close the door. No food. If God can grant you the grace, no water. You stay there. You lock the door. Lord, you have anointed me as a man of God. What is happening? My church is not growing. My life is not growing. Lord, something is wrong. What is wrong with my music ministry? Nobody is placing demand on my grace. While people are sleeping in the night, you are rolling from left to right praying. Shakatopakata. Tears coming out of your eyes. You are crying your destiny with passion. Lord, open the gates of my destiny. I'm the firstborn. I'm the lastborn out of 15 people. 30 people in my lineage. Nobody has risen. There has to be a way out. What is that yoke, oh God? Why 
why is it that 11 ladies married in my lineage none of them has joy he said bring forth your strong reasons believers don't pray believers don't get angry enough there is what we call holy anger it's true that you just sit down somewhere and say lord something is wrong something is wrong something is wrong our only brother that got a job died two months my sister married a rich man she died with the man lord what is wrong there has to be an explanation you sent an angel to come and give daniel understanding where is that angel he must come and meet me in this room you are praying there is a way you can be angry sleep will not near you you organize vigils now in two hours people are sleeping and sometimes it's even the pastors that are sleeping what sort of indiscipline is that how many hours is a vigil yet the same person can stand by the road and talking for the same time for the vigil it's a spirit slumber is a spirit pray inquiry prayers lord everything i put my hand in doesn't work i entered five relationships in one year they all died what is all this someone said he will give me a job it didn't work lord render heaven speak to me i need an explanation when job called upon the name of the lord and he meant business god came He said, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. Let me tell you this. If you want to rise in life, I want to give you a very big advice. It's not a doctrine. Please maximize your night times. I repeat, maximize your night times. Only weak people snore their entire life through the night. The night is when destiny, destiny things, shift things in the spirit ask the doctors most patients die in the night you are at a sensitive period in your life you need to be serious it doesn't have to be a departmental retreat lord a three-day fast i need to find answers i need to find answers off your phone remove the battery and throw it and keep it somewhere don't let that addiction will you die if you don't own your phone for three days will you die if you are not on social media we make it look as if these things if we off them we will die what if they steal the phone and for one week you don't have a phone and you get down on your knees lord is me and you here no friend no koinonia no apostle you, if you have the resources and God grants you grace, you can go to one of these quiet hotels somewhere. Just book a room, 5,000. And close yourself there. Lord, you have said many things about my life. I'm tired of confusion. Lord, I'm tired. I believed this last week. Now, I don't even know what I believed again. I just finished a series on deliverance. And now, I'm even doubting the whole deliverance thing again. Lord, you have to help me. And you pray. Let me tell you. God comes when we take him serious. Did you hear what I said? God comes when we take him serious. For as long as you play games with God, you will never have him come. There is a mystery to an encounter. You must give it a life and death seriousness. When Koinonia was going to start, three days before Koinonia, or, or thereabout, before Koinonia would start, I went on a retreat. Jakatokabada. Lord, everything that I've put, the blueprint you revealed to me, is it intact? And if God ever spoke to me and said, this koinonia thing, you're on your own, I will close it. I never do anything in this ministry and in my life, a major decision without taking out time to pray. You ask the leaders, they know. Sometimes we will discuss something and they just come back the next few weeks and they find me keep quiet over it. If I keep quiet over an issue God has not spoken, I would die there 
until his voice comes we don't respect the voice of god that's why we continue to move in circles in our lives holy spirit you are welcome Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes. Fill this temple with your presence. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait. You want to make a serious decision in your life who to marry and all you are doing is browsing facebook you are about to marry a devil you want to relocate from nigeria or abroad and you think it's not a reason for a retreat should i move should i do and you browse advantages of staying in nigeria google enter that's your destiny we are talking about there are defining moments please hear me not every decision in your life is equally important lord should i start a church or continue like this you don't make that kind of decision sitting down and drinking coffee you lock yourself and say flesh give way i need to hear something for the destiny of millions fasting does not kill a vigil does not kill my brothers and my sisters conquer spiritual laziness and receive the grace to stay until something comes upon your life lord my ministry is not stable men are coming in men are going out what is all this today we have 10 members tomorrow we have 20 members and the holy ghost comes to you and says son there is a level of power and grace you need they will not come and sit down for nothing and you stay there one hour becomes two hours and the spirit of god is watching your seriousness two hours become three hours and the holy ghost says this lady is not joking i have seen there is a boundary you cross in prayer that even god knows you are no longer joking you are praying praying from your heart lord you have called me into a ministry of signs and wonders where are the evidences why is my life barren why do i stand to minister and the word of god is not coming with fire what could be wrong oh god i have read every book i have listened to every man of god and all of a sudden he comes with his glory and says my son there is a way ministry is done it's a revelation you hear every great man tell you of their encounters run away from a man who does not have an encounter of the secret place you don't copy everything there are things you must get by yourself in the secret place we were preparing we we're going to pray shortly before koinonia will start you know i was already sensing in my spirit okay maybe let's go and start ministry in abuja or somewhere there or just or whatever it is you know koinonia was already on and i just sensed in my spirit and then i was having a retreat towards the end of the year and i just prayed and prayed and slept i didn't even know i had slept and all of a sudden i had a dream and in that dream i saw a plane lift and on that plane it was written e and i it was leaving zaria to abuja listen just when it was about to land in abuja it crashed when i got up i said lord i get the message the time has not come i would have stupidly gotten up just because somebody wants to sponsor you does not mean god is in it please hear me the times we live in require keenness of sensitivity one brutal mistake you make can destroy your testimony forever 
I would have done that now and you would have been surprised. What have you taken for granted in your life? A gentleman said he likes you. You didn't pray. You just smiled. I think he's the one. Even Samuel saw Eliab and said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. God said, no, 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 no. If you love God and you want to go far, please get this message and listen to it. You become stable in life when you practice retreats periodically. There are times I go for retreats and I say, Lord, am I, are the messages I'm preaching in Koinonia, is it consistent? Am I, am I leading the people in the right way? And God tells me, sometimes you see me tell you that God gave me messages here messages most of these messages you see commanding results that they talk about and all of this the names the lifter of men that message has blessed i was lying down on the bed praying and the next thing i saw on my pillow the lifter of men that's how i saw the message you would think people are lying if you are not a man of the secret place please we are spending too much hour of our life in the open a great man of God, most of your life should be indoors. You are preparing for an extraordinary life. Sister, God has told you you are going to marry a great man of God. Cat walking around is not going to bring you the marriage. You go back. You are praying and building your spirit. To carry the load of ministry is not, it's not a wheelbarrow. You are pushing. You are carrying destinies on your head. There are many of us, because you don't have the spiritual stamina for the level you are praying for, God will never take you there. He will take you there and you can die in one month because of the kind of attack and persecution that comes at that level. There are even finances. This prosperity thing you see is warfare. Prosperity is warfare. Oh God, make me a millionaire. And God says, son... You are too innocent. You don't know the attack that happens when you have money. Is God speaking to us? This message is calling us a restoration back to retreats. Some of you, you have not had any retreat this year. Next week is our workers retreat, thank God. But much more than a workers retreat. Let me tell you the truth. If there is anyone who has been connected to this ministry for a while and you cannot go on a personal retreat, you are not growing. You are not growing no matter how busy you think you are. You may not have the money to book a hotel or a place. And by hotel, you don't book a hotel where they are playing music in the night and clubbing. You have, you have, you have, you have ruined the whole retreat. Find a place alone walk around oh god show me what am i not getting well what am i getting and you are walking and talking like a madman you think you are talking alone one hour you are talking by yourself this is what will happen lord this ministry you are giving me this anointing this healing anointing and you stand and the power of imagination begins to come you are standing and seeing yourself ministry and you are sensing a time will come the climate starts to shift his majesty is coming make way for him all of a sudden he can come there two three hours you may not know what is happening until the next time you hold a mic when you hold a mic you will see the fruit of your retreat ordinary praise the lord you are going to see people getting healed and you say what is this like the gentleman who was saying you don't just speak and the power of god touches people god is not a magician you can fake power you can't fake his presence you are on your own minding your business trying to win the war of life by yourself and god is saying you are doing this thing sensually you are doing this thing carnally you never will be able to do it he says honor me with your tithe and the moment that happens there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you and that which you have becomes supernatural not just natural not just natural it becomes supernatural the reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside look at this right to the road right everywhere let me tell you the reason why 
it is not just because this is a great ministry it is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural there are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here when you see them you imagine there is no amount of invitation you would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit he said i am come as a captain in other words the same way you fight there are spiritual arsenals to wait in you have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals and the lord is saying the earth is fighting you when you return my designated portion you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you this ministry by the grace of god we are faithful never for any reason and by any means under the sun will we touch god's portion not out of fear but out of revelation my life as a person god is my witness that i honor him and that portion that belongs to him this is why i'm dangerously protected it's not about a man no 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 dangerously protected I share with you a simple but powerful mystery when pastor Jakes was sharing and he said they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager deputy manager with interviews on phone you went to school and you are intelligent is that how it is done let me tell you the blessing breaks the rules for you it breaks the rules for you yes when men say it cannot be done it breaks the rules the problem is that we are too carnal we have intellectualized life life is spiritual say it after me one more time shout it like you believe it life is spiritual all that you see is not all that there is those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Tonight God is asking you, are you ready to stop struggling in life? Let me tell you, struggling is a cause. If you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle I am telling you now struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things trying to look for earthly relevance there are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks you will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything give us James chapter 2 verse 26 I hope we'll be able to find it I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life i shared it in abuja i was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit Paul, watch this. Oh, sorry, James, the apostle James was teaching on faith and works, corresponding action. Is that true? And while he was teaching on faith and works, he just feared off and brought a powerful principle in an attempt to explain faith and work. He, comp he, he compares it with something. He says, For as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy the only reason that i can interact with him is because there is a spirit is that true 
if the spirit leaves this body what happens i will reject the body all of you will reject the body are you getting me and we will have to bury him because it is a body though complete it has no spirit are you getting me now i want you media please keep it there keep it there so that we'll... i want you to remove the word us and just read just the first line to the comma are you ready want to read one more time one more time for the body without the spirit is dead it is said for the body of man for any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it it is dead for any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead for any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body it says for a body without a spirit so the nation of israel was like a body without a spirit and he said joshua you will lose you need the spirit component and circumcision authorized the spirit when the realm of the spirit came they said let's go we can take jericho and with one shout this was what david knew that as big as goliath was he was a body without a spirit the other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm ah goliath was shouting and david looked at him he said i see a body but there is no covenant no spirit what is the force in the spirit backing you and goliath said am i a dog even if you fight me honor me and david said you are joking you don't know who is talking i'm not alone I, I, you are an uncircumcised see the word again see the word again you are an uncircumcised i would have been afraid of you i would have considered your threat if you were circumcised where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit and he said i'm circumcised i may be weak but there is a government that backs me when you get this key my brother you will run as if satan does not exist i promise you i promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do experience rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder how many people listen i have given up on trying to do things by my strength because i know i'm wasting my time the body in the same way the next time somebody stands and threatens you that is a body without a spirit see no matter what talk people talk i only consider you if you are connected spiritually are you getting what i'm saying i will deal with you the body without the spirit is dead i will make sure you leave this job the body without the spirit is dead you only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance whether demonic or whatever are you getting me circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service 
is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely we are covered heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because god's designated portion listen when you steal your tight you have not only destroyed your destiny you have stolen from your children every time you don't tight just know that your firstborn is in trouble if you don't do it again you are affecting your children because he said i will pour you a blessing you will not have room in other words no matter how greedy you are your lifetime cannot exhaust it so when you steal you have endangered the destiny of your children god's portion if anyone ever told you tithing is all about money that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong tithing has nothing to do with money it's the law of open heavens let me surprise you if your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000 you are operating under a closed heaven don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million the heavens is open it is called due process i'll teach you next week there is a protocol to spiritual things are you getting my point tithing is what opens your heavens and then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper if you like carry one billion give charity organization give for the building of church if you are not a tighter i guarantee you the bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron all of them are conductors of heat get set for heat in your life when the heaven is open if not if for nothing we know there is ventilation fresh air the wind comes but when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron many of us here no matter what prayer happens in this that's why we took the communion the devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised the devourer is not a demon the devourer is a principality even jesus christ acknowledged them that's why he said he is the head of principalities it destroys men's lives on legal basis this earth is too wicked for you to allow chance no i pray for people all the time people with cancers hiv tuberculosis communicable diseases imagine if i refuse to be faithful i would die like a chicken because most times i lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here they know that some of these things are physically not healthy but i'm circumcised my goodness you invoke my name in a shrine both the invoker the invokee and the ordinance it they will burn to ashes ashes no matter how mad a man is he doesn't enter fire by mistake he can cross the road and you say he's a madman but when he sees fire he fears off when heaven backs you let me tell you your life becomes a wonder even to you this ministry is a wonder to everyone not just because we are so smart we are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing oh fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne You are mighty on your own. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the 
and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. They that are with us are greater, greater, greater. Man There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. point number one. Oh God by the blood I cry for mercy where I have allowed the devourer. I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I have allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. Not by revelation. Pray, Koinonia. Pray, Koinonia.
Hallelujah. Listen. I give you an assurance. And I pledge the name of the Lord upon this. If you take what I've shared tonight. For many of you this is your secret. It's your password. To a mysterious level of lifting. A level of lifting that will surprise you. As much as surprise those who are your spectators. God's portion. The time. His designated portion. That makes creation to walk in your favor. Makes your enemies to walk in your favor. Mysterious. But powerful. Consistent. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer. And then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. We are going to pray. In the next five minutes, listen. I want you to confront the gates of your destiny. And I want you to pray and say you must open up this night. Lift your voice. It's the seventh month. The gates of my destiny. By the power of the Holy Ghost, 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 that must open up. Some just some in Moses, but we trust in the name of our God. Just add one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away that terminal disease must die today that cancer must die today that HIV must go today that barrenness must go today that stagnation must go today Koinonia, pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh 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 oh
Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are yet to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer request very quickly. So that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Man de kretu shebra de la barada da balada ba. Man ta la do so so predishi la korea da balada ba. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention. Can I have strings, 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 strings? Hallelujah. I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people. This is what I kept seeing. Like a man sitting on a man's shoulder. I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone. Um, uh, 
suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of david it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah i'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we're going to shout that name jesus my goodness i sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of god will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of god especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you jesus father in the name of your son i pray right now and i sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch i pray that by this shout oh god there be a visitation that by this shout oh god everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! Oh yes! That's fire! That's fire! That's fire! That's fire. That's fire. Of the Holy Ghost! That brings the leader! Outside! 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 Miracles are happening! Miracles are happening! Mighty deliverances! By the power of the Holy Ghost! You must let them go! You must let them go! Right now! By fire! Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire oh god locates them right now right now right now i cause that spirit i cause that spirit ladies ladies a miracle is happening to sisters i cause those spirits i cause those spirits Outside, the fire is falling on ladies, falling on them. 
Ricardo, sua pique dela, seria a capacada. Paco do pique dela, sempre que te quita, chilo salada, mamá. Sempre que te quita, 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 I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God Comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray. Miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating Inside and outside, we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of Jesus. Families, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as they shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. 
the Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as I begin to speak the wind I see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh God visit them right now in the name of Jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one two three Jesus I'm hearing a name Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not busy, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's Where is she? Mina. Just She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting Amen. but i'm going to pray for you yes, you believe that yes sir. you believe that yes, sir. because this is delay yes. i'm seeing delay in your yes, family sir. serious yes, delay yes, it's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband yes, sir. i'm seeing two of you arguing yes, sir. but the lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family this Amen, in the name of jesus Amen. christ father let there be rest rest for her in the name of jesus christ you are doctors where is your mother my dear you. she stays in Kaduna 
why the same way you are crying is how i'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit and the lord is ministering to me the lord is saying why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her look at me like we shared tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing are you hearing what i'm saying and even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her dogara dogara i'm hearing a name dogara dogara who is dogara you your name is dogara yes sir where's your dad he's at home in kaduna he's, he's at home in kaduna. we have to pray for him what i'm seeing will never if they are permitting anything please and please maybe carry them out of we're about to pray please don't worry in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over and i cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of jesus it will not come to pass we cancel it right now by the blood of jesus christ amen madam i want to pray for you the way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come. There's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Okay. Huh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand up. Pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm, I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You are all Israel. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit. All I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I do. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of god is against you in the name of jesus christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of jesus christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of jesus christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name 
of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, leave their lives. Leave their destinies. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. You, come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You, come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about because I was praying and before I would even start I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter right you believe me you believe me you will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify in the name of Jesus Christ I pray the Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach madam the reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season that's what the Lord is saying I should tell you the reproach of many years is being rolled away I'm seeing like a baller that's what I'm seeing a trash place where they pour dirt and I'm seeing a new seed shooting out and that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the Lord is saying I should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of Jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand I command you by the blood of Jesus you foul spirit you have oppressed this body in the name of Jesus I break your covenant I break your ordinance there is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady it's not just her can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady i curse you now i curse you i curse you by the god of heaven and i curse you by my office in the name of the lord jesus christ i curse that power let her go now right now release her destiny release her family now by the blood of the eternal covenant she's free go release her now in the name of jesus christ let me tell you something listen listen people of god don't think we're playing games here i know you may see some of the things happening these are the powers that have tied down men's life it's not solved by counseling you are just moving in the physical yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound we are not embarrassed we are never embarrassed to set people free because that's what Jesus said there's got to be a way of setting people free hallelujah father jobs now in the name that is above all names I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life Lord I declare everyone called jobless here 
by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you I compel them to call your loved ones I compel them to favor you here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. The family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. of the legs look what look if if the devil you remember i told you this a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person Imagine what it will do to someone's destiny. I say this without a sense of cynicism. Many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week. Look, we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God. Because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, no, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and you let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you, who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. Last night when I was 
something beats me when I was sleeping. I just woke up and scream. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You From prayed when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is your leg, yes. what happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in this thing. It's a, for me to stand or to walk, almost two years. It's broken for me. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? Like, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand still, it's a You can't stand straight? It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? No, it's not shorter than another. Okay. It's a, it's cut it? good as I'm standing. Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out. Came out. The this other is thigh. the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I curse this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I believe. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? Pains. Since I yeah, since I've been sick, they used to swell up. Since, so I can't you... since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now I can't walk. I can walk and be hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay. How about you? My leg is swollen for five years. Five years. Where is which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two months now. I started to leave this leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problems since December. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yes. are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft for five years. I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name, I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you are standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just the laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities Holy, 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 holy,
holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. condition of this brother the legs look at me leave him move your hand look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lifting lift it lift the other one lift it lift it You are mighty on Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come. 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 Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come. come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. Look at on your throne. Completely. The legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Yeah. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. My heart will sing. Please go 
those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, on as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Shibarato Soto Go ahead. Stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater. Our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Shake paka proto soto Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. be testimonies in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations into testimonies Lord we agree we agree we agree in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations to testimonies stretch your hands and keep receiving I receive by faith come on pray all kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost all kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened, be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord. Prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of jesus we pray for contract that long delayed lord we pray that lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints lord in the name of jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of god call come on cold altars in the name of jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony i'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah 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 for many of you it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you hallelujah 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 keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. Sasa di buchi. Sasa di buchi. Sasa di buchi. We give you praise. Sasa di buchi. One more time. Don't sit back there when you hear.
hear the voice of the Lord. Songs are given to show. I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things. It go and the rest. Huh? But as you pray this prayer, the power is broken over your life. Say after me, as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night i make jesus lord of my life i repent of my sins i declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentleman now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy walk in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you are trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded you are yahweh you are seated on the throne 
you are Yahweh seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding I'm praying for you some of you listen as I pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh god i release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside Take it for exploits, exploits, exploits. Hallelujah. Everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy. I command stagnation to end now. 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 My goodness, something is happening to your destiny. Every night season in your life, every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now I see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor favor favor
everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba, lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now Eriakata, creativity, creativity. I release it. I release that anointing, creativity, skill, expertise, competence, proficiency. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you 
whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here it's time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus christ that the lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as i speak father i come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gift one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit i declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow i prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise father we give you all the praise I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls I mean connections mysterious happenings I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of Jesus I command that every gate that has been closed the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you I command the earth to work for you 
I command the wind to walk for you. I command the stars to walk for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done for us as a house? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.